Good morning, Sun City Church. Right now you're gathering in homes all across the city, really all across the nation, and we are so glad that you're joining us online today. For many of you, we know this might be your very first church online experience. And you might be thinking, like, this feels a little weird. It's definitely different than what we're used to. I just want you to know, God, he is so glad that you're joining us today. The worship is going to be awesome. We're going to worship God just as much in our homes as we do when we gather together here. It's going to be amazing. And so we're so glad that you're joining us today. You know, it's been a crazy week for all of us. There has been so much going on. We're really living in unprecedented times. But here's what we know here today is that Fear is not going to rule. It's not going to be the thing that reigns. Come on. Jesus is still on the throne. All our praise, all our worship, it goes to him. We're still going to stand in confidence. We're going to be the church. So we're just inviting you to enter into this place of faith here with us today. Let there be courage in your spirits as we gather together, even though we're doing it online. Oh, that's right. We've been in this series called Can't Stop, Won't Stop. And I can't help but think this is just a prophetic word yeah, for this right? hour. Who knew what would be coming against us as a nation and as a people? But I'm telling you, the church is still the same. This is the church's finest hour. We serve a can't stop, won't stop God. And he's living inside of each one of us. Amen. And so, man, I'm so excited. Here's what's going to happen today. We're going to worship here live. And you're going to worship there in your homes. We're here with our Sun City College students, with some of our staff. And I'm telling you, they are ready to go for it with all of their heart. Yeah. Come on. I'm going to encourage you. You go for it with all of your heart there in your living room. And in fact, right now, I'm just going to invite you to stand up. Yeah. Don't just watch this service on the other side of your television yeah. or on your mobile device. Go ahead and participate Come with on, us. Right? God loves your worship. Your worship isn't just something to be done for yourself or because you're gathering with other, other people. It's for Jesus. Yeah. And so I would encourage you, participate as much as you can. Today we've got a word that is for you straight from the heart of God. Pastor Jamie's going to preach. And I want to encourage you, go digital with your amens. You're watching there online. Comment in the comment section. Build some community and say amen online. And then right after our service, we have a special video that our Sun City Kids team put together. And if you've got kids at home, it's a great time to gather together with your family and participate in children's ministry together. Something, honestly, that you might not be able to do on our regular Sundays as we gather here together. It's going to yeah. be amazing. Let's go ahead and let's pray together as we get into worship. Go ahead and lift your hands right there in your home. Yeah. Let's all lift our hands right together. Father, we love you. Yes. Lord, you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Nothing surprises you. Lord, we thank you, Father, that you rule as King Supreme over our lives, yeah. over our nation, and Lord, yeah. you're the King over the whole earth. Lord, today, as we worship you, Lord, we pray that you'd be exalted, you'd be lifted high. Lord, we'd love you with everything inside of us, and yeah. you would be blessed in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. God bless you. Let's worship together.
so much this morning. God, we're so grateful for you and for your presence. You know, I was just thinking this morning, with everything that is going on, we're here at your homes worshiping Jesus this morning, how wonderful it is that we're going to lift up praise over whatever else is going on in our world. You know, no matter what I'm feeling today, I'm choosing to lift my praise to Jesus. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to sing out to him. And I hope you in your home this morning, I hope that that's what you're doing too. Come on, let's raise above all of the noise and let's sing this out. Let's lift our hallelujah this morning. Come on, let's sing it all together. Let's go. I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. Yeah. I'll raise a hallelujah. Raise it up this morning. Come on. I'll raise a hallelujah. Come on, let's start weapon. My weapon is a melody. That's right. I'll raise a hallelujah. Yeah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Come on. I'm gonna sing in the middle.
Lord, right now, Lord, we thank you that you are good. Lord, in the midst of every single circumstance, Father, in any situation, Lord, your goodness reigns 
rules supreme over our life. Father, even in the middle of crisis, but even in the middle of fear, but even in the middle of things that uh, just seem to be shifting all around us, Lord, we thank you that you are so, so good. And Lord, you're faithful, God, through every season, you're faithful in every single storm. Lord, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you, we worship you, we honor you in this place. Lord, you are worthy of our very best worship this morning. God, we love you in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Amen. Everyone at home said amen too. Amen. Come on. Hey, why don't you go ahead and have a seat this morning. I just wanted to share a little bit with you. Before we get into the Word of God today, uh, how was worshiping at home? Did you like that? Here's the thought that I had, that no matter what it was like for you at home, the volume was set at the point that you loved it, right? Nobody had a moment where they were like, it's too loud or it's too soft. Like, you just got to pick your own volume. It was probably amazing. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, we, we, we do want to acknowledge this season that we're walking through uh, as a community. Um, obviously, facing what we're facing with the coronavirus and it's spreading all around the world, the whole earth is shaking as we navigate the news and as we figure out what is what is it that we're supposed to do and how should we respond we're, we're in a time of shaking and it's truly unprecedented no one is exempt it affects all of us and this week I was with a gathering of pastors over in Colorado we were spending some time together and uh, it, it was amazing we had about 15 20 pastors around the table and we're all getting these updates on our phones about what's happening throughout all the different states all around the country, and we're just talking and spending time praying and discussing and uh, giving each other counsel on what we should do and where we should go, how should we respond. But really this one verse kind of bubbled up in our midst, and we started to discuss it and pray it together. And literally there's probably 15, 20 pastors all around the nation praying and talking about this same verse, but I just wanted to share it with you today. I just feel like it's such a prophetic word for us in this hour. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27, it says, this means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only the unshakable things will remain. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken right now. And when stuff gets shaken, that which is unshakable remains. All of the stuff on the top goes to the side and you end up with what is on the bottom, the rock solid foundations of your life. And the, 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 the verse goes on, since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. I just think it's so beautiful that the kingdom that we're receiving as believers, as follower of Jesus, our life is built on the unshakable rock, which is Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And even when everything around us is being shaken, our life is built on the solid rock of Jesus. And we, we stand in this unshakable kingdom. Come on, that's who you are. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you're watching online today, you've received the kingdom unshakable. And it needs to change how you walk. It needs to change how you think. It changes how you move through seasons of uncertainty like this because we can move out of a place of fear into a place of awe and respect and worship of our God. We've got the unshakable kingdom. I love that word awe, that our awe remains focused on Jesus. I think right now the whole world is in awe of the coronavirus. It's like we've never seen anything like this. It's this global pandemic. It's going all around the world. But listen, God is not in awe of the coronavirus. And neither should the followers of God, the people of God, stand in awe of a virus. Come on, we stand in awe of Jesus. My Twitter feed will not capture my awe. The news channel will not capture my awe. Only my Jesus will hold the awe and the worship of my heart. And I want to encourage you to keep everything inside of you focused on Jesus, worshiping him and realizing none of this caught him by surprise. He's got it figured out and he is moving in the midst of his people so good. And a lot of you are wondering, like, what are we going to do, Pastor Danny? We don't even know what the future looks like. How is this going to work? What does this mean for us as a church? And I want you to know that as a leadership team, we've been gathering together and discussing our plans for the future. We've been praying and uh, we've been getting counsel and wisdom from our elders, our overseers across the country. And um, 
Now, there's just this sense of divine purpose and destiny. Like there's this sense that now is the time for the church to arise. This is our finest hour. All throughout church history, when crisis has come against the church, the church has only proved to be so resilient. It grows and it prospers and it spreads. And more people come to know Jesus in times like this than even that, than times that are peaceful. And so we are full of faith and expectation. So I want you just to mention a couple things that we are going to do in this time in light of the present reality that we're facing. We are going to use technology to stay connected together and continue to accomplish God's mission for our church. The mission of Sun City Church is to help people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. And I want you to know that none of that is going to stop. People are going to continue coming to know God during this next season. People are going to continue to find freedom. Even as we're in homes scattered throughout the city, people are going to be finding freedom because finding freedom isn't about something that takes place in a building on a Sunday morning. It's about a work that Jesus does in our lives and through our relational connections with each other, which will not stop during this season. People are going to find freedom. People are going to be discovering their purpose and making a difference, maybe now more than we have in the past days because the doors of opportunity to make a difference in our city and across the nation are wide open like never before. So we're going to continue to pursue God with everything inside of us and stay connected through technology. We're going to stand in faith together while we're walking the path of wisdom. We're going to look for opportunities to serve and love our community in the midst of this crisis, and we're going to glorify God every step of the way. I'm telling you, I feel this sense of confidence and this grace from heaven that we've been talking about the past couple weeks, there's this can't stop, won't stop thing that we embody as a body of believers. And I'm so glad that you're together with us for it. You know, I was so excited when I saw the news that President Trump has declared today a national day of prayer. And we were talking together just as a staff before we started this service, how really no one knows how to control what's going on. This virus is currently uncontrollable, but can I tell you what? No virus is greater than our God. And, and there is this privilege that we have as the people of God, the believers on the planet, the salt and the light, like Jesus called us. We can step into a place of prayer, and literally prayer can change the course of a nation. Prayer can change the course of a people group. And so right now, I know you're probably seated on your couch or somewhere, uh, wherever you are, but I'm gonna ask you for this time of prayer that our president has called us to. I'm gonna ask you to stand to your feet and we're gonna pray together. And we're gonna believe that God is going to turn the tide of what's taking place right now in our nation. So will you, will you pray with me right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, that you are King of Kings, you're Lord of Lords, you are the great physician, and you are the great healer. Lord, none of this caught you by surprise. Lord, you weren't caught off guard at all, but Lord, you have a plan in place. And so God, as your people, we gather together today online in homes all across our city. And God, we petition you. We ask you, God, would you turn the tide of the coronavirus in our nation in the name of Jesus? And even as Sun City Church, we take responsibility for our city and our region. Lord, we pray over the Inland North West, Lord, that you would turn the tide of this virus, Father, on this side of our state in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Father, for a wave of healing to go forth from Spokane. Lord, you have, Lord, sent many waves of healing out of this city in the past. And God, what you've done in the past, Lord, we're asking that you would do it again in Jesus' name. Lord, wherever the virus is coming in, Lord, we declare the healing power of God over every family, over every home, Father, over every business and gathering place, Lord, as people are connecting, Lord, even in grocery stores and hospitals and offices, Father, Lord, we're declaring, declaring your healing power, covering our state, covering our city, Lord, even across the whole nation together in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up, Lord, all of the medical professionals that are fighting so hard, Lord, to care for people and see them healed and treated. Father, we pray for strength 
and for grace and for virtue and for sleep and rest and healing. Father, over every doctor, every nurse, every administrator, office staff, Lord, everybody that serves in the medical community, Lord, we pray for your covering, protection, and your strength over that community in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for every first responder. Lord, would you strengthen them and heal them, and Lord, give them grace to do exactly what you called them to do. And Lord, we're asking for wisdom in the days ahead. Lord, would you lead us, God, exactly where we're supposed to go. Lord, give us strength. Give us courage. Lord, help us follow after you in faith with our whole hearts. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. A amen. Come on, you can be seated there at home. We love you. God bless you. that this is the series that we are in right now. Can't stop, won't stop. It just feels like God, he set us up to be in this moment because this didn't catch him by surprise like Danny said earlier. He knew this was coming and he knew that we needed to be ready for it. And I hope you're feeling encouraged already. And I just want to talk a little bit about how we respond to fear in this season. I was thinking just how crazy this last week has been for all of us. Honestly, even just the last 72 hours. Me and Danny have talked a lot this week about how so much changes so quickly. And the way that we woke up was not the way we were going to bed at the end of the night. Everything was different. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But one of the things that's been difficult in all of this has honestly been the mixed messages. And I don't know if you feel this way, the same that I do. But there's these mixed messages that I kind of keep hearing or sensing coming from the community. For instance, this whole one about you don't really need to stockpile things. Don't hoard it. Leave some for everyone else. And then you walk into the store just to pick up any little old thing and everything's empty. And you just think like, I better buy everything. Otherwise, there's going to be nothing left, you know? A little bit mixed message there. The message about this virus isn't that bad. For most people, it's actually like going to be totally fine. And then the we're shutting down everything, you know, like, which is it? <laughs> is it very bad or is it not? The whole idea of be nice, help everyone, and do not get close to any person, right? <laughs> They're all carriers. They don't even know. The enemy could be lurking in your midst right now and... It's just been, it's just been crazy. It's been insane. One of the, the actual fun things that has happened actually though this week is we've had a fun week just even as a family because um, we have not one child with a broken foot, but two children with broken feet. That happened just this last week. I don't even know what the odds are of that. We have two kids with broken feet and coronavirus taking over the world. So it's been a good week. It's been intense. Um, Danny actually was on this trip that he mentioned earlier. So I was really glad that he actually got to go on that trip. There wasn't like honestly any kind kind of uh, frustration about that at all because he's he's given up the opportunity to be on that trip several times in order to be there with our family and I was so glad that he was actually able to be there and so while it was an intense week we were we were talking a lot communicating while he was gone but he was he was not even supposed to be here in Spokane this weekend he was supposed to be flying to LA and his trip got canceled so he ended up being able to come home and be with us and we've been working on um, just strategies with our team how to really handle this how to navigate this season and so um, we've been doing that nonstop since he landed on Friday but um, because there was this mixed message that I didn't need to buy all kinds of extra stuff, I didn't. I was working on other things, and um, we actually do an online grocery ordering system that we've been doing for months now, which I love. It's awesome. I think this is a really great option for people, by the way. Um, and. And so I had put in my order, it was coming yesterday, and I didn't even think about it again, right, until all of a sudden I realized, like, I wonder if they're going to bring me some of the stuff that I need, you know, like, everybody's starting to talk about how there's no paper towels or toilet paper or all of these things, which, like, I didn't buy extra of in advance, and now is supposed to be coming on Saturday and is not probably coming on Saturday, you know, so I said just to wait and see how it all turned out. 
And of course, you know, they showed up with my grocery order and there was none of those items that um, I need. And so Danny goes, you know what? I'll just go over to the store and pick some up for you. I was like, all right, babe, you do that. <laughs> you go pick some up for me. He literally drives over to Albertsons. This is one o'clock yesterday afternoon. Drives over to Albertsons, picks up the last pack of toilet paper and drives home. No joke that happened yesterday. I, I don't even know. That's like some kind of favor of God, miracles happening inside of this season. Just flies in, goes and gets the last one. I, uh, so our world's crazy, people. Things, things are happening. And we've been talking about um, just this last week how similar some of the stuff that we're facing is to really what the early church was facing um, in, in that time. And, and yeah, things were different for them, but a lot of the same emotions. You know, we're talking about a people that, that were walking with Jesus, and then their own religious community turns Jesus over to be crucified. And just the feeling that they're coming for me next. There's this fear. The Romans are in control at that time, and there's no hesitation to throw them in prison or to... Um, have them executed. There's just, there's no hesitation there at all. And, and they're wondering this early church community, whether or not their own friends or their own family are going to turn them in. They don't know where the enemy is. It feels like the enemy is on every side. And it, it starts to make you feel like you're jumping at shadows. You know what I mean? So we've just been talking a lot about how similar that feels to some of the stuff that we're facing. It's easy in this place to let fear grip you. And fear, when it comes in, it really paralyzes you. It comes in and, and it freezes you. And you might be thinking like, oh, I don't know, because I saw fear causing people to do a lot of crazy stuff this week. You know, they didn't look so paralyzed. <laughs> they looked like they were taking over Costco. <laughs> That's what looked like that was happening right there. But really, it, it paralyzes you on the inside. I had this moment when I was younger. Um, I grew up in the mountains. I've, I've talked about that some before of Northern California. And, and my family, we hunted white-tailed deer um, when I was growing up. And so when I was 15 years old, you know, went through hunter safety. And it was my very first season. I was going to go hunting with my dad. And me and my sister, we were out. And what we would do is we would, um, we would go along these these roads up in, in the mountains. We'd drive along and we'd stop. And then we'd walk for a ways. We'd look out over these ridges. And we'd be looking for whitetail. And so we were doing that one morning. I was 15, my sister a couple years younger than me. And, and my dad, he, you know, has his binoculars out. He's there on the side of the road. And early morning, he's looking out over the ridge, like slowly scanning, looking for any sign of white-tailed deer. And, you know, me and my sister, we look for a little while, but we're not really that great at um, spotting them anyways. And so I'm like, hey, Dad, I think I'll just walk right up the road here and see if there's any up at this, you know, other spot up here and, and just get a different angle on this. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not that far. It's not, it's not without it, it outside of his sight. So me and my sister, we both start walking. I, I have, you know, this rifle that I'm carrying. And, and as I'm walking, all of a sudden this black bear steps out of the brush, like right in front of me, like so close I can still remember it. I, th I think I can still smell what it smelled like, right? Because in this moment, this black bear steps out. And as a 15-year-old, I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, no, what do I do now, <laughs> right? Like, is this thing going to attack? Am I supposed to try to use this gun that I'm, you know, still learning how to use? Should I run? Should I let my sister handle it? I don't know. There's so many thoughts going through my head in the moment and, and really fear, fear paralyzed me. And even though it might not feel like you're paralyzed when there's these reactions taking place, because maybe you're responding to people online, or you're hoarding up some food, or you're locking down the house, or you're sterilizing everything. Really, fear comes in on the inside, and it paralyzes us. And I think that's what we see the early church doing in this moment. John 20, this is after Jesus has already been crucified and he's risen from the dead. And, and here's where we find the early church. This is before they would have even been called that. These are Jesus's followers. And in verse 19, it says, that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And suddenly... 
Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you. Man, they're standing there beside, behind locked doors. And I think the word that God would want to put inside of our spirits, even here this morning, is don't let fear shut the door on Jesus. Because the very thing they needed is who they locked outside. Thankfully, Jesus walks through walls, so he just walked right through it. But they locked Jesus on the other side. They're so afraid. Fear has paralyzed them. It has shut out everyone. We don't know who the enemy is. We don't know what's happening inside of this season. We're just going to bunker down. We're going to hide. And there's this, there's this thought that gets into us. Like, we got to protect ourselves. It's really easy to start getting into this place where we have the solutions to how we're going to handle this virus. Like Danny said earlier, this virus is currently uncontrollable. Now, we're trying all these measures, these precautions, just to try to get people away from each other in hopes of just slowing it down. But really, we need Jesus in the midst of it. We need Jesus. We need him to come in. Say those same words to us. Peace, peace be with you. The very person that we need to be right in the midst of it. We don't want to shut them out in this season because of fear. I remember a couple years ago, we've talked about this some as a church community, but for our own family, there was a shaking for us when, when our oldest son, he was diagnosed with epilepsy. And, and I can still remember that moment where we're just, Enjoying a normal Saturday morning. Kids got up and they're playing some video games. It just felt so normal. I wasn't expecting anything crazy to happen. And all of a sudden, I hear this sound in the other room, the sound of David falling to the ground. I can still remember the way that Hudson just responded in that moment. You know, as a parent, when you hear them yell, and you can tell by the way that they yell that something serious is going on. I can remember the way that he shouted in that moment. I can remember running in there and seeing him seizing his whole body, convulsions. Not ever having seen that kind of thing before. And I, in that moment, I really thought I was watching my son die. And outside of the fear that grips you in that moment, what I remember most is how present God was in the midst of it. I, I can't even explain it because there's no logic to it. There's, there's no rational thought. There was nothing in my mind able to come to a place of let's focus on Jesus in this moment. Crisis hit. I remember him being so close. I remember him being so present, that, that place of peace that passes all understanding so tangible in that moment. I'm just telling you, here today, right there in your homes, God wants to come in. He wants to be peace in the midst of the storm. He wants to come in, and he wants to be with you in this. It feels like fear is all around us, but we want to make sure that we're giving opportunity for Jesus to draw near in the midst of this, situ this situation. And the second thing that I don't want you to do is that I don't want you to shut the door on community. Don't let fear cause you to close everyone else out and you're jumping at shadows and you're afraid of, oh no, oh no, somebody's gonna come in and infect me. I don't even know where the enemy is inside of this situation. In fact, you know, everyone's talking about how to socially distance ourselves from each other in this season. And, and really, it's the reason that you, you are. You're meeting in your homes, and, and we're all spread out. Sun City Church is all over um, the city, really even further than that here this morning. And, and we are. We're, we're practicing that. Um, but we don't want to let that cause there to be separation in community. And, and I want to just read you out of Matthew 8 how Jesus handled this type of situation in his day. It says, Matthew 8, starting in verse 1, it says, Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. And suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Now, leprosy was the coronavirus of that day. In fact, I think I might have been more afraid of it, actually. 
Like, that's a worrisome thing. And nobody wanted to be around leprosy, right? If you saw somebody who had leprosy, you walked clear on the other side of the road. You weren't getting close to that. In fact, they would isolate everybody with leprosy and they were essentially left to die. Yeah. You, you go in your own community and we can't do anything for you now. You're, you're done. We're just going to try to take care of ourselves in this place. And it says this man with leprosy, no, before him and he said, he said, Lord, if you're willing, you can heal me and make me clean. If you're willing, God, you can heal me. You can make me clean. And notice what Jesus did in this next verse. Jesus reached out and he touched him. And Jesus didn't need to touch him. Jesus is God. Jesus can say the words, right? And he can be healed. And Jesus chose to touch the leper. Jesus chose to touch him and speak healing and administer healing in that way. And he says, I'm willing, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest, let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who've been healed of leprosy. And this will be a public testimony that you've been cleansed. So listen, Jesus both ignored and followed social distancing in this moment. He did both. In that moment, Jesus ignored what everyone else was doing and he touched the man. He just ignored the, the protocol of that day. And in the very next moment, he says, don't just go tell everyone the, about this. Go follow the health protocols, the regulations of your day. Go show yourself to the priest and then you will be cleansed. He did both. And you might be thinking on, on your end of things like, um, well, that's a lot of help. <laughs> what, what is it you want me to do? Um, feels a little bit mixed message again, you know? Like, should I be close to people? Should I stay away from people? Which one is it? And really, this is why we cannot have Jesus on the other side of the door, right? So this is why fear cannot shut Jesus out because every moment requires understanding from him. There's not a clear path right now on anything, right? We are walking in the tension of faith and wisdom, listening to what it is that people are communicating about how to walk in this season and deter the spread of this disease. And at the same time, standing in faith and saying, God, you are our healer. You are the one that we look to. It's not everybody else that has wisdom for the day, but you are our source of wisdom. And we're right in the middle. And sometimes that causes us to go one way on social distancing. And we reach out and we touch the person that nobody else is willing to touch. And then sometimes it's we're following the regulations and we're going and we're doing what it is that we're being asked to do in this season. Here's what Isaiah 30, 21 says, your own ears, they'll hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. And this has got to become a new season of prayer. So it's got to become a new season of leaning in. God, what is it you want today? If one day can change everything so radically, we wake up one way and we go to bed another way, we cannot face the day without Jesus. We can't face the day without his wisdom leading us in every single decision that we make. Social distance cannot become spiritual or community distance. And I'm so proud of our teams for just taking up this challenge. And we learned that there was a ban on gatherings over 250. And there's a lot of different ways that we could approach it. But all of our teams just said, you know what? Like we have never been a church that has solely existed within the walls of a building. We're the church. We're the church regardless of whether we meet on Sunday mornings all together or we don't. So they're figuring out incredible creative ways of how to use technology to continue to gather. There was pre-service prayer that took place this morning online over Zoom. There's greeters gathering together and getting ready for how to operate in the gift that God's called them to online. We have people that are operating in their gift and looking for creative new ways of God. We're just not going to be stuck in the ways that we've always done things, but God, we're looking to you because we understand that even if we're going to socially distance ourselves in the days of head, we are not going to distance ourselves in community. We are not going to distance ourselves from you. Jesus, we're not shutting the door. 
Fear is not going to cause us to be locked away from what it is that you want to do. And here's, here's the third thing that I, I would give to you is don't shut the door on new people. Don't shut the door on new people. You know, whenever we feel threatened, we instinctively protect our own. It's just instinctive inside of us. We go get the food for our family, right? We look at the welfare of our own financial status and, and what it's going to look like in days ahead. We're thinking about the education of our children. We're thinking about us and our family and the people who are closest to us. But God has called each and every one of us as those who are followers of Christ into this role of welcoming people into community on his behalf. And now more than ever, there are people looking for hope that is found in Jesus Christ. They're waiting for someone to extend the invitation and to be those who would welcome them into a place of community in this season. It says inside of 2 Corinthians 5.20, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. We speak for Christ, come back to God. And so we have, we have these natural greeters that every Sunday when we gather live all together here, they go out front, they stand by the doors. And as soon as somebody gets out of their car, they're ready to greet them from a distance. And they're shaking hands and hugging people before all of this occurred, right? They're welcoming people into the house of God. But every single one of us, we're greeters for the kingdom of God. Regardless of whether we've ever operated on that team, we're greeters for the kingdom of God. And now more than ever, we need to be loud, proclaiming like, hey, we have a place for you. There's a people for you. There's community for you. When all the world is isolating and fragmenting, we're coming together. It doesn't matter if we're all over the city in homes and we're not in this room. The church is coming together in this season because that's who he's called us to be and that's what he's called us to do. Whenever there's a disruption of this magnitude that happens inside of our community, there is an opportunity for the enemy to come in with fear and to paralyze people, cause them to shut the door, to lock away, to get on the other side of the wall. But there's also this opportunity for the gospel like never before. There's this opportunity for God to reach out to people who are hurting and broken and scared and to step past the wall right through every barrier that has been in the way and say, peace, peace be with you. And you, you are ambassadors on behalf of Christ. This is not the season to just take care of our own. We are welcoming new people in this season. We're going to welcome new people. We're going to start new online small groups. We're going to create new ways of community. We're just getting started in the creativity space because we're not shutting down. We're not backing up. In fact, in moments of crisis, the church is rising. That's what's happening even now. Lots of things changed in our world this week, but just like Danny said, there's lots of things that just stayed the same. Lots of things that are unshakable. God is still God. Jesus is still our Savior. The church is still the fullness of his expression here on the earth. Heaven is still our final destination. This is still our temporary assignment in this world. There is so much that's changed, but all the important things remain the same. Everything that can be shaken has been shaken. But there's a foundation that's strong, that's confident. And maybe, maybe right now you're in this moment and you're feeling like, you know, Pastor, I want to believe you. I don't want to live in fear. But what if this gets worse? And what if my family gets sick? What if the people that I love get sick? What if our finances take a hit? What if, what if we can't recover? What if everything changes? I hear you. I think we all have those concerns right now, and none of us are trying to pretend that we don't. Fear, though, is not defeated by a lack of enemies but by the presence of grace. 
It's not when everything is quiet and everything is still. It's when God steps in the picture. That's when fear has to step down. That's when fear loses its grip. It's not when everything is easy. It's when grace enters the picture. And we've been in this series, can't stop, won't stop. We've been talking about the grace of God, which is the power that helps us move from here to there. It's enabling us to do the will of God. It's the desire inside of us to even pursue it. He comes in and he helps us when we cannot help ourselves. So I'm looking at this early church and I'm seeing the difference that took place from the moment that they're shaking in their boots, they're scared, they're locked on the other side of the door, hiding from everyone and everything, to what begins to take place in the book of Acts. Now you, you look at this same community in the book of Acts and they're radically different from that group that was hiding on the other side of the door. Something incredible began to happen to them. Something that became a threat to everyone around them because there was this power that rose up on the inside. And just listen to this description inside of Acts chapter 4 of what was going on in this time. It says, Acts 4, starting in verse 32. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. Maybe not even toilet paper. Hard to know. But they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And listen to this. And great grace was upon them all. So this community, this group of people who's so afraid, they're so worried. Now all of a sudden they're selling all of their possessions and they're bringing them all together and they're walking with one heart and one soul and they're bold. In fact, they're going into every place that they can get into and they're proclaiming this is who Jesus is and this is what he's done in our life and here's what he can do in your life. And there's such a threat because everyone's believing and listening and God's doing incredible things that people are taking them and throwing them in jail, trying to silence them, trying to get them to be quiet. But the spread of what was going on was more powerful than the coronavirus is in our day. Spread all over the globe. Continued on thousands of years later. And what was it that caused this to take place? Listen, there was great grace, it says inside of verse 33. Great grace was upon them. Danny talked about this last week. Grace, it's his power. It's his help. God coming in, meeting us in our need. And and what I want you to know is that the greater the need, the greater the grace. The greater the need, the greater the grace. He comes in when we're at our weakest he is then at his strongest. Which is why even this morning, man, we gather together. There's just a few people in this room. I can feel the presence of God. Wow. Yeah. We gather together in smaller groups. We gather together online. And, and there's a sense of him in the midst of us. Because the greater the need, the greater the grace. It says inside of 2 Corinthians 12, 9, he said to me, the apostle Paul talking about, It's revelation and prayer. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So that the power of Christ may rest upon me. We don't know what to do. We don't have all the answers. We don't know what's coming in the days ahead. This virus is out of control. Here's what we do know. The deeper the need, the deeper the grace. God, you meet us right where we are at. And it's why we can say with all confidence that we are in the church's finest hour because the greater the need, the greater he shows up in the midst of us. The greater he empowers us to do what it is that he has called us to do relationships with God, they're going to deepen in this season. Relationships with each other, they're going to grow stronger in this season. New people are going to become a part of this community in online ways in this season. We're going to a whole nother level because fear can't stop, won't stop the church. 
fear can't stop, won't stop his people, those who are called by his name and recipients of his grace. We're the fullness of Christ on the earth. Leprosy couldn't cause him to back down in his day. Coronavirus isn't going to cause us to back down in our day. Still the same God that we serve. And it says inside of 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but listen to what he has given us. Power, love, and a sound mind. It's not given us a spirit of fear. Fear comes in and it tries to creep in in this season, tries to paralyze us, tries to cause us to shut the door on all the things that God's wanting to do in our lives. But God, he comes in by his grace. There's this power, love, and a sound mind. Power, let's, let's look at that for just a moment. He gives us power, power to do what? Power to do what he's called us to do. Power to do what he's called us to do. And some of you have felt God stirring something inside of you. There's something even earlier in the year as we spent some season in prayer all together as a church community. There's been some stuff even in your small groups and you've just felt God stirring something in you that it didn't even seem possible for how to pursue it. All of a sudden there's gonna be some space in your schedule. There's gonna be some room in your life. God's gonna bring in some power to be able to pursue what it is that he called us to do because just like as a church community, we started this series not knowing that we would be here on Week three, dealing with everything that we're dealing with. God knew though, and he was leading us into this series, giving us everything that we needed so at this moment we would have it. And he's doing the same for you individually. He's been leading and stirring, knowing this moment would come. Some of you are being drawn into greater places of leadership. Uh, honestly, it excites me. I think that we get used to sometimes Church as a whole, certain people are like the professionals. They do church and we let them. We watch them. We receive from it. And it's encouraging for us. But God hasn't ever called just one segment of the church to be those who are producing it. He's actually called all of us to be the church. And some of you just got commissioned. <laughs> Some of you are now leading some groups that are happening in your homes right now. And you've invited some people over. or You're going to be inviting people over in the days of head. And all of a sudden, you're the person leading prayer. You're the person that's causing community to happen. It's now a new time and a new place for leadership to rise in you. And listen, he's given you the power to do it. He's given you the power to rise in this season. And when your community around you is hurting and broken, he's given you the power to meet needs in a new way. Some of you are going to have the opportunity to talk to friends and neighbors about the hope that is in you. And, and you didn't even know how to get into those conversations before. It's like, man, I don't even know how to bring up the subject. It just feels awkward and weird. And it's not going to feel so awkward and weird all of a sudden. There's going to be opportunity to say, hey, here's why I'm not freaking out about everything. Here's why I don't have toilet paper filled up my whole basement, you know? Like there's a different way that I'm approaching this. But, but it's not because I'm just rejecting everything going on around me. It's because I found peace, peace that comes from Jesus. In fact, I would just even ask you this. Maybe here today, after this service, you could just think about the people that are right around you in community. Some of those who would be most vulnerable. Some of those who would be older. Maybe some of those who would be at risk of this really affecting them. And could you just check in on them? Could you go over to their house and maybe you don't even know them very well and say, hey, I just want you to know I, I live right across the street. I just wanted to make sure if there's anything that you need right now, do you, do you need me to get some groceries for you or help you figure out how to set up an online service? Is there anything that I can help you with and make sure that you have everything that you need? Here's my number. In case there's something that you need, I, I just want you to know I'm right across the street and I'd, I'd love to be able to help. All of a sudden there's a new ability to be able to have conversations that you haven't had before. 
And there's some people that are exhausted, tired, working around the clock. And you need to just get on Messenger or whatever device you want to get on or app you want to get on, whatever avenue you want to use. And you want to invite them to participate in this service afterwards. They're going to get off their shift and they've been dealing with crazy all day long and they need to be a part of this. And because of technology, they can. So make sure you're inviting them to it. Those medical professionals, those people that are working at Costco, God bless all of the Costco workers in Jesus name. All those people working at grocery stores, all of our, our people in schools trying to understand what to do with education. And all of the single parents and people that are trying to understand what childcare is going to look like, come on, let's invite people in. There's power to do what God has called you to do inside of this season. Here's the second thing is, is he's given us love. He's given us not a spirit of fear, but he's given us power and he's given us love. And there's an ability to go deeper with God in this season. I just ask you, would you just start your morning in prayer? Before you do anything else, do you get up in the morning? Can you spend time just bringing all my anxieties before you? All the worries, all the concerns, all the things going on in my world around me, God, I'm bringing them before you here today. I'm coming into a place of worship, lifting you up and lifting my eyes at the same time so that I can see from a different perspective and fear can't hold me in its grip. But instead, I'm going to walk confident of who you are and who you've called me to be in this season. Come on, let's go deeper in our love. Just even this week, I started this study on, on my own Instagram account, just this study of courage. Because in this season, I know I'm going to need it at another level. And so I get deeper into the word of God. And I'm not just trying to muster it up in my own strength. I'm going to the source that can actually help me walk in that place. Come on, there's, there's something new for you in the Bible, in the word of God. And you begin to study it and read it. And you begin to train your thoughts to think on it. And it begins to affect you in a new way. And, and God has something deeper for you and your love for him in this season. It's a deeper connection that I already mentioned with each other. You know, some of you, you have, you've thought about being in a small group and, and for whatever reason you haven't been able to do it. It's a brand new day. <laughs> we have all these small groups that are going to be meeting online. We have some that are continuing to meet live. There's a small group regardless of where you're at and what's going on in your life. And can I just ask you, would you get involved in a small group? Can you create community? For as long as it makes sense and it's, it's able for us to have it happen, we're going to have people that are meeting in homes and they're participating in the service online. Yeah. If you didn't do that, let's do that. Let's gather together. Let's not allow this to become a season of isolation, but let's deepen our love for each other. Yeah. One of the things that I'm so excited about that's going to be happening right after this service actually is our kids team. They've put together a great series that you can participate together in as a family. If you have kids that have been part of Sun City Kids, they're, they're probably missing that part here today. They're missing their friends. They're missing the worship back there and that whole experience of getting to do what they normally do. And can we just create community at a deeper level and love each other in a deeper way by participating online in this series that they've created? They're calling it Unlikely Heroes. I love that. Unlikely heroes, because what we're really exploring in this whole series is how sometimes you do feel afraid. And can God use you when you are? Can you feel both confident in who God is and insecure about who you are at the same time? And we're exploring some of the tensions, some of the emotions. What a great opportunity for you and your family all together to be able to participate in this series, to pray together to be worshiping together and to be able to have conversations at a deeper level. Here's the third thing is he's, he's given us a sound mind. A sound mind, not a mind gripped by fear, not ruled by everything that's happening all around us, but a mind that is centered on the will of God to understand, God, what would you have for us in this season? Listen, the world around us is looking for wisdom in the midst of chaos. So many mixed messages. 
people hearing like, okay, let's social distance from each other. What does that look like? And to what extreme should I be going to? Should I, should I just be locking the door on the house and not even going out? What, what does this look like for me? People trying to understand how to navigate this season. People are looking for confidence. And there's so much fear. People are looking for hope in the midst of pain. Because we're feeling it as a whole community right now. The pain of not knowing. The pain of everything changing. The pain of all of the stress financially. And all the things happening in our community. Listen, they're looking for generosity in the place of lack. God wants to come in. He wants to give you a sound mind. Be able to operate in wisdom. When fear comes in and it paralyzes us, then really we find ourselves reacting. You show up at the grocery store, even though you didn't need the food, all of a sudden you begin piling into your cart. You just begin to operate like everyone else is operating. Oh no, what, what if there's not enough? But he's come to give you a sound mind. What if in this place we begin to be a little bit more generous? You know what? I'm going to trust God to take care of all of my needs. You have it. You take it. I'm not going to hoard. I'm not going to try to protect myself. I'm not just going to try to hole up here and shut the door on Jesus and community and new people. I'm going to be in the place of confidence because God, you have not given me a spirit of fear. But God, you've given me power and love and a sound mind. And because I can have a sound mind in this moment, I can make a decision that's not just good for me. It's good for the people that are around me. It's good for community. I ask you, what if God's called you for such a time as this? Not just us. You. You in your community, your workplace, your school your neighborhood? What if God's called you for this very hour? Because when things get darker, the light needs to be brighter. As a whole community, we've been studying this verse as part of our series, Romans 5, 17. It says, it is certain that death ruled because of one person's failure. It's even more certain that those who receive God's overflowing kindness and the gift of his approval they will rule in life because of one person, Jesus Christ. we are called to rule in life because of Jesus. You'll need to stay locked behind closed doors. You can walk with caution. You can walk with wisdom. You can walk with the power of God in this season. Love, a sound mind peace in the midst of the storm called to rule and reign in this life. We've never been a church that's existed solely within the walls of the church. This week is going to another level of us getting out beyond just these physical walls and into our community. God's called you for this moment in this hour. The church I love what C.S. Lewis said. The world is full of fear. We need a fearless church. We need a church who will rise up. We need a church who will become what it is that God has called us to be in such a fearful world. We need a fearless church. I pray for you this morning. Pray that that would be the way that we walk in this season. Just right where you are in your homes, if you bow your heads and close your eyes, Jesus, we're inviting you into this place. God, where fear has tried to grip our hearts, come in and try to steal from us the opportunity that you would bring before us. God, we just come back into this place. God, I'm making sure that you are the one that's leading us in this season. God, you have the place of leading and directing our every decision, our every step. The Spirit, we're asking right now that you'd be in our homes, you'd be in our conversations. And God, we are, we're asking for health. God, for every single individual, God, we are praying for your health right now. 
God, you'd cancel the assignment of the enemy. God, the spread of this virus would stop. But God, instead, there would be a spread of healing. God, a spread of trusting in you. God, a spread of us moving into the place. God, of receiving grace for the day in which we live. God, would you cause something to begin in us that extends into our community? God, we're asking for it now. God, where peace come into our lives, just as you stepped through the walls with that early church, you said, peace be with you. God, would you step into our heart, our spirit right now? God, that same presence, that grace to help us in this time of need. And right now, before we wrap up our time here together online, I just want to extend this invitation. If you're listening right now, and you haven't made the decision to put your trust in Jesus. If you've never come into that place of saying, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. It's not fear. It's not my own self, my own wisdom. It's not anything else that's gonna be governing me, but Jesus, I surrender to you. I'm letting you be the Lord. If you've never made that decision, or maybe you've made it at one point and you've walked away from it, we just wanna take a moment right here, right now, and just provide an opportunity for you to make that decision again. Jesus can step into this situation. You can walk through it with him. Grace can be in your midst. So right where you are right now, if you wanna make that decision either for the first time or for the first time in a long time, what I'm gonna ask you to do is just believe that in your heart and just pray. You can whisper it as I pray. You can pray it just in your heart right now, but believe it with all of your heart. And right now in this moment, God can step into your world and you can begin to walk through this with him. So if you're making that decision right now, I'm just gonna invite you as we all pray together to pray this along with me, Jesus, we're inviting you into our life. We come into the place and repent of my sin I turn away from it, doing life my own way, trusting in my own wisdom, leaning on my own understanding. Jesus, right now I'm asking, would you be the Lord of my life? I come before you, invite you, I come in, I bring peace, I bring forgiveness, I bring healing. And God, would you be the one who leads us forward in this season? In Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. Amen. Come on, all together, all across Spokane, let's celebrate with everyone who just made that decision. Come on, let's worship him. Amen. That's so awesome. Hey, as, as you have made that decision, I know there's many that have been watching online and just in your heart, you know that's you and you prayed that prayer. I wanna encourage you to take a next step of faith. And you can do that by simply sending a text message from wherever you are to the number 97000. Just text the phrase, hope starts here. And what'll happen is you'll get a simple video from Jamie and I that we put together that will encourage you and help you take a next step. And, and really, it's our, your way of letting us know, I made that decision to follow Jesus. There's a private moment that you just had in your living room or wherever you are with God. And then there's this public moment of, of going public. Here's the decision that I'm making. And we would be so honored to help you take a next step. So if you would, take out your phone right now and send that text message. You'll be so glad that you did. I do want to let you know that normally in our live services, we have an opportunity to fill out a connect card. It's just for, for people that are trying to get connected here and let us know that you're new. But it's also for all of our people to put in prayer requests. And right now, as you're watching online, I know so many of you have prayer requests that you want to get before the Lord and really before each other so we can pray together. Well, we have made a digital connect card available. It should be showing up in the comments of wherever you're watching right now. If you want to click that link and fill out a digital connect card, include your include your prayer requests in that, in that digital connect card. We're going to get that to the prayer team. We're going to pray over it as a staff and as a leadership team. We're going to believe that God is going to hear and answer our prayers in this time. And I'm telling you, if there was ever a time to submit a card, this is the hour. So go ahead and fill that out. Let us know that you're watching and so we can be praying together with you. Also, just want to echo what Jamie said. This is an important time to get connected in a small group. 
And so if you're not already in a small group, all of our small groups will continue meeting. Some of them will meet online. Some of them will meet in person. But even if you belong to an in-person one, but you feel uncomfortable showing up live, they can include you through digital video, through Zoom or Facebook chat or Google chat. There's all kinds of opportunities to include people digitally as our small groups continue on. And I love what she said. Social distancing does not have to be spiritual distancing. So we want to invite you, stay connected. There should be a link coming up below you in the chat box to make sure you can click that and get connected to a small group this week. And lastly, I do want to encourage you in your giving this week. Uh, Most of the time, we'll show a generosity video that explains some of the things that are happening as a result of your generosity. But today, just in the midst of financial crisis, we have the largest drop in the stock market in the history of the United States this week. This is uncertain times. But I did want to speak to you and encourage you in your generosity today. We don't give on account of how we're doing financially. We don't look at the stock market and decide, well, that's why we give. We give out of loving covenant with God. We give because it's our way of putting God first in our life and saying, Lord, you're the one that brought all of this into my life. So God, this is what you've asked for. Lord, you've asked for me to give part of it back to you as as an act of worship and honor and love to you because you are the Lord of my life, not my job, not the stock market, not anything else that's going on. I'm doing it for you. And I do want to acknowledge in uncertain times like this, just as Pastor Jamie talked about, like our natural reaction is to try to hoard up for ourselves. That's why we go to the grocery store and buy more than we need and people are are emptying the shelves. All of that happens because we are afraid for our own security. And can I just tell you, if you've been battling fear or you're nervous at all, even an act of generosity and giving can break the power of fear in your life. So I want to encourage you to stand firm, be generous, stay faithful to God in your giving. Uh, and, and I'm believing that God is going to break the power of fear and continue to bless you in mighty ways as we give together. The easiest way for you to give online is through our website or through the Sun City app if you have that downloaded on your phone. Also, you can text the number that you see on the screen, text an amount, and it'll bring up the queue for you to be able to give. It's completely safe and secure. I know many of you, you're not used to giving online, and so this would be an opportunity for you to try. Your information is totally safe and secured. But if you are uncomfortable giving that way, you can continue to mail your check into the church. Uh, there's going to be, I think on the screen right now, it shows the off the church office number or address, and you can mail in your check to that, and we'll receive that during the week and process it. I want to thank you for your continued generosity in this time. I'm going to pray over the offering, and then i got one more thing before we watch our kids' video. Father, we love you, and Lord, you are such a good, good God. Lord, you've never left us. You've never forsaken us. And God, you're not going to forsake us in this hour today. Lord, we give today out of an act of worship and love for you. And Father, I pray that you would bless this offering right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you see everybody that has suffered loss in this season. Lord, you see those that are worried about jobs and financial situations. But God, you are our provider. And I ask that you would provide for your people in miraculous and incredible ways. Lord, meet every single need and provide for your people in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone online said, amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us with Church Online today. Um, Here's my last thing. Please stay connected through social media and by checking updates on our website. We're deciding this week what's going to happen next week as we watch what continues to take place in our nation and specifically right here in Spokane and Spokane Valley. So make sure you're staying connected by following us on Facebook and Instagram and also checking in online on the website. We love you. God bless you. Right now, you can stay tuned for this video that's been put together by our Sun City Kids team. It's going to be awesome. We love you. God bless you. Have a great week. Sun City kids and families, thank you for sticking around to watch this video. Man, our hope is that you would gather together as a family and watch this short video together and talk it over. We've even included a few discussion questions at the end that you can hopefully talk over as a family. For these online videos, we've chosen to do a special study we're calling Unlikely Heroes of the Bible. And our prayer is that as we learn how God used normal people like you and like me who had normal fear and stress and worry, that we can have faith that God can use us too to be heroes. So this first week, I want to talk about 
a guy named Gideon. See, Gideon was a normal guy, just like you and me, and he had normal worry, just like you and me. And the question I wanna answer is, can I feel worry, but still be confident in God? Man, that's a great question. What do you think? Can you feel worried and still feel confident in God? Well, let's look to the story of Gideon to answer that question. See, Gideon, the story about him is found in the Old Testament book of Judges, starting in chapter six. Gideon's people, the Jews, were in trouble. The whole nation was really sad because bad things were happening. In a way, it's kind of similar to how we are sad right now about the coronavirus. Everyone was praying and asking God for help, so God sent an angel to talk to Gideon. Gideon was actually so sad and afraid that he was hiding. But when the angel came and talked to him, the angel said, mighty hero, the Lord is with you. And Gideon began to argue with the angel and said, like, who am I? I'm nobody. I'm just a normal person. I'm afraid. And the angel began to call him and tell him that he would do mighty things for God and God wanted to use him. In fact, actually, let's watch this short video that explains Gideon's story. God's story, Gideon. So part of God's story is about a man named Gideon, and it begins like this. Israel, God's special family, had turned against the one real God and worshiped idols. They had forgotten how God had loved and cared for them and needed a reminder that he was the one in charge. So God took away the Israelites' farms for seven long years. Whenever the Israelites planted crops, God would let another nation called the Midianites sweep through and camp on Israel's land, ruining everything that was growing there. But even though his own family had forgotten him, God still loved them deeply. So, at the end of the seven years, God appeared to a young Israelite named Gideon. God said he was going to free the Israelites with Gideon's help. Gideon, however, wasn't so sure. So he asked God to prove himself by performing a series of miracles. Gideon said, if the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, but the ground is dry, then I will know that you're going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. That's what happened. Just to be sure, the next night, Gideon asked God to do the opposite, make the fleece dry and make the ground wet. And God did it. Next, he even sent a sign through an angel. Gideon was finally convinced that God was in his corner, so he called together an army to fight against the Midianites. Now, normally, having lots of people is a good thing when you're about to battle. But like I said, God does things a bit differently. He told Gideon that the Israelites had too many soldiers. If they won now, God knew the Israelites would say it was because of their own strength and brag about it. So, God wanted Gideon to have a smaller army. Gideon was nervous, but he did as God asked, which is always a good idea, by the way. He told his men that if they were afraid, they could return home. With that, 22,000 soldiers left, leaving Gideon with about 10,000. For you math whizzes, that's two thirds of his army just poof, gone. Even after all that, the army was still too big. So God told Gideon to take the soldiers down to the water to drink, and then send home the soldiers who drank out of the stream like dogs. Again, Gideon did what God asked and was now left with only 300 soldiers. God knew Gideon was probably worried, so he told him to sneak down to the enemy camp where Gideon heard soldiers talking about a crazy dream where a loaf of bread rolled into the Midianite camp and over their tent. One soldier said that could only mean that Gideon would triumph over them. Gideon returned to his own camp confident that he would win the battle. He divided his men into three groups and gave them each a trumpet and a jar with a torch inside. Not usually what you bring to a fight, but God had a plan. Gideon's army reached the edge of the Midianite camp and then went into action. They blew their trumpets, smashed their jars, and shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And don't forget, they did all of this without a single weapon in their hands. Terrified, the Midianites fled, accidentally attacking each other as they went. In fact, they ran so far from the battlefield that other Israelites were able to capture and defeat the leaders of the Midianites. With the enemy leaders gone and their army running away, God had saved Israel, just like he said he would. And that's the story of Gideon. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. 
Israel turned away from God. God reminded them he was in charge. God said he would save Israel. He would use Gideon. God performed miracles for Gideon. Gideon gathered an army. God made it smaller, much smaller. Soldiers had a dream. Gideon's army surprised their enemies. The Midianites ran away. God used Gideon to save Israel. And that's a part of God's story. Man, that was such a great Bible story about Gideon. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. This is my daughter, Abby. Uh, so we're Dad and Abby. But together, we're Team Dabby. Man, so at the beginning, we asked the question, can I be afraid but still be confident in God? Gideon, you know, at the beginning of the story, we found him. He was really afraid, right? He was hiding. Yeah. And when the angel came and told him, hey, you're a hero, you're a mighty warrior, he gained confidence in God. So I think even when we're afraid, we can still be confident in God because God helps us in our fear, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we learned. Hey, something else that we're going to do that's really fun is our viewers have sent in some questions. And so we wanted to try to answer those questions together. Yeah. So Abby, do you want to read the first question? Yeah. The first question is from an anonymous person. It says, I'm really afraid of spiders. Can God help me with that? Abby, was that question from you? Well, maybe. Because <laughs> you are pretty afraid of spiders. Um, that is a great question. Can God help us overcome our fear of spiders? Um, well... I'm not totally sure. I mean, they're kind of scary and hairy and they have those yeah. things. Um, something God has given you to help you overcome your fear of spiders is a big brother. Um, what is one other thing maybe that God could help you overcome spiders with? Hmm. This, as soldiers have armor and swords, I have this to help me overcome my fear of spiders. Hold on. Well, there Sorry you go. about that. You learned something new. Um, God did help you overcome that fear. Uh, maybe go to our next question. Okay. Our next question is a really good one. It says, at school I get afraid of making new friends, and sometimes when I have a substitute teacher, it's really hard not to be sad about it. Ooh, that is a great question. Man, those are hard environments when you go and you don't know anybody and you, you're maybe afraid to make new friends. What do you think? How could you, how could God help you overcome that fear of making new friends or maybe walking into a classroom when you have a different teacher than you used to? Yeah, I think you could definitely make friends by sometimes seeing like, if someone's alone at recess or if they're eating lunch alone, I feel like you could go and sit by them and that you could just talk to them and make them feel more comfortable. That'd be really good. Um, something else you could do too is you could probably even pray. And you yeah. could just say, hey God, right now I'm really afraid. Can you help me? Or even like Gideon, remember Gideon did those two tests and said, God, if you're real, do this. You could even say, God, right now I need you to be real in my life and help me overcome this fear. That's good. What's another question we have? The next question is, why did God make Gideon's army smaller? Oh, that is a really good question. Remember, that was so weird. He had like 20,000 people and then it dwindled down to 10,000 and then even yeah. less, right? So why, why do you think God took Gideon's big army and made his army even smaller? Hmm. Well, I think that God was just trying to show Gideon that no matter how big or small his army is, that he can defeat the enemy. So good. Yeah, because at the end of the day, Gideon knew that the reason he won the battle was because of God. It wasn't because yeah. of his own might or his own strength or his own power. So we can actually have confidence in God because it doesn't depend on us, right? No matter what situation we go in, even if we don't feel smart enough or tall enough or fast enough, God is good enough and he can help yeah. us, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's our last question? Okay. Our last question is... What can I do to help me have confidence in God? Ooh, that is a really good question. We already talked about one of them. I think one of the things we can do is we can pray. We can mm -hmm. ask God to help us have more confidence. What are some other things that we can do? I think we can read our Bible because the Bible can talk a lot about how if you talk to God, your fears can go away. Yeah, the Bible has a lot of great stories like Gideon um, that can help us remember how big and how awesome God is. What are some other things that we can do? Hmm. Well... We could thank God for all he has done for us. That's so good. Just remembering all the amazing things God has done for us helps us remember that even in this situation, God can actually do good also. I love that. 
hey, thank you for watching this video and answering these questions with us. Continue to have these same conversations at home. Maybe ask these same questions with your family. What are you most afraid of? And parents, you go first. Here's a question for you to answer. What are you most afraid of? And then have that conversation. Hey, thank you for watching this video together. My hope is that these videos are going to encourage us and help us to continue to grow in Christ together through this different time. Hey, let's keep connecting on Sun City Church's webpage. Let's keep connecting on Facebook. And if you haven't yet joined the Sun City Kids private Facebook group, this is your chance. Just search for Sun City Kids. It's a private group. You have to ask to be added to it. I would love to include you in that community. My hope is that there we can post encouraging videos throughout the week, share some scriptures, maybe even some activities that we can do together at home with our kids, because as we know, school is now closed uh, for a little while. So maybe some science experiments, some fun things to reinforce what we're learning together. And let's keep growing together in God. Man, I can't wait to keep sharing these videos with you, and I will see you again soon. God loves you, and have a great week.